Centre. I've loved every minute of it. It's been a privilege. You, the licence payers, pay my way. Thank you. But today, I'm not allowed to talk to you as a BBC presenter, and I'm not going to ignore those warnings, shall we call them. But I pay two licence fees, one for me and one for my son at university. So I think it's my BBC, it's your BBC, and we've got a right to say something. Do you agree? Yeah. I have to say we've got uh, lots of bands that's got volunteered to come down and play for you. We've got speakers coming along. And it's really weird standing here now, it's quite nerve-wracking, because, as John Peel once said, being a radio presenter is like being an audio typist. You sit there with your headphones on, you twiddle the buttons and you talk to your imaginary friends through a microphone. It's pretty weird, but you never see the whites of their eyes. So it's really great to see you today. Thank you. But nevertheless, nerve wracking. Now, I've mentioned Peel, so where else on the BBC these days do you get all those archive Peel sessions? All those archive Andy Kershaw sessions? All those archive Johnny Walker sessions? Sarah Sarah Self, Liz Kershaw sessions? sessions, Steve Lamarck sessions. As my mate Gideon Cole pointed out to me the other day, the important thing about six music, it's not just about six, uh, new music, which is important, it's about a huge, rich archive that the BBC is custodian of on your behalf, and you deserve to be able to hear that day in, day out, as well as the latest bands, and you don't get that anywhere else on the BBC, or on radio, or anywhere else, dare I say, in the world. And that's why we value six music. Now, last night, I was watching BBC Four. Sadly, Skippy wasn't on. <laughs> but there was a fantastic fourth part of a series. Last night, it was Sin Britannia. It was absolutely superb. It's all about what the BBC should be. And it occurred to me while I was watching that, that all this rich archive that we were treated to, and the Sin bands of the late 70s and 80s, wouldn't have existed without a program called the Old Grey Whistle Test, or latterly, Whistle Test. And what happened to Whistle Test? Well, it was part of the Arts and Culture Department, I think it was called, at the BBC. And then it was taken over by the Light Entertainment Division. And the new head of that looked at the view figures for Whistle Test, and he saw that they didn't quite match up to blankety blank. <laughs> they didn't even match up to Top of the Pops, so he scrapped it. Well, that's like saying, if you've got Top of the Pops, you don't need whistle test. It's like saying, if you've got, ooh, let's think, EastEnders, you don't need Little Dorrit. If you've got, you don't need Newsnight if you've got John Craven's News Round. <laughs> It's like them saying it was scrap the London Times newspaper because we also published the song. It's like saying we'll get rid of six music because we've got Radio 1. Oh hang on, that is what they're saying. <laughs> six music came about eight years ago and I was very pleased to get a job as a listener as much as anything else. And that's how I'm speaking today as a licensed player and a listener. Because I wrote an article in the Independent saying there wasn't a radio station for me. There wasn't a radio station where I could hear the bands that I loved day in, day out. Not pigeonholed at night. Even the BBC realised there were two needs in music radio. And they were for, one need was fulfilled during the day by Radio 1, and the other one was squeezed into the evenings, marginalised into the twilight hours on Radio 1, with some of the great presenters that I've mentioned. But there wasn't a radio station for me. And following that article, I was asked to speak at the Radio Academy, which is the Industry Foundation. And after that, I was told there was such a radio station being opened, and would I like a job on it, and it was called Six Music. And I'm sure you'll agree, the last eight years have provided brilliant radio for people who like the rock and roll. And we don't want it to go! around the world. Anywhere you go in the world, you've heard about bands. 
and they've heard of the BBC. And the six music from the mail we get from around the world is a great ambassador. So it's not just for us, it's part of Britain's standing as well. So maybe the BBC needs to change. Well, I'll tell you some of the things that I would do. It costs £7 million a year to run six music, which might seem a lot, but with 700,000 listeners or so, I reckon I could correct the maths. That's 10 quid a year for everybody that listens to it. £7 million. And Robinson gets 3 million quid a year. <laughs> <laughs> Graham North gets 2 million quid a year. Jonathan Ross gets 6 million quid a year. Which is better value? What would you keep? 6, six, 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 six. It shows as well that you can listen to music in your home, but listening to a radio station is part of being a community. And we're all part of that community today. You can't put your finger on it. You can't define what a six music listener is. But I would suggest that we're alive, we're curious, we're animated, we're passionate. We don't want to be told what to like by Simon Cowell. Yeah. There's some great broadcasters on other stations, but I don't want factoids. <laughs> I don't want quizzes, I want to hear the music. On many radio stations doing a great job of entertaining, the music is incidental. On Six Music, the music is fundamental. Yeah. It can't be defined, Six Music listeners can't be defined by race, by gender, by age, by the locality we live in. It's just a thing we've got. As Jack Black said in a film, School of Rock. <laughs> Stick it to the man! <laughs> Stand up for what you believe in. Don't let the station go through apathy. Thank you for listening to me. I've got a show to do for now. <laughs> I'd like now to introduce you to a band that I only discovered through my brother Andy here. He's back on Radio 3 this year. <laughs> Otherwise. Andy found this band, the Long Riders. They were based in California then. Sid Griffin, the leader of the band, has now made his home, married here, and I think he's now became citizen with a child. And he's kindly agreed to come along today. His band is now the Cold Porters. And Sid is here because he supports Six Music, because like my friend Jane, who also lives in America now, although she's worked me at Radio 1. Well, there is no radio station like this in the States. They love six music, and so six. 